for the apocalypse, this ain't bad. Wonder Hussy here, just rolled up at my campsite, <laughs> and it's a doozy. Okay, I'm meeting up with my friend Scott, who you might remember from some of my videos. Uh, he's actually riding his one wheel up on top of that mountain back there right now, but that's his adventure van, and I met him here at one of his favorite campsites, right on the shore of the beautiful Salton Sea. That's right, this is that giant, stinky, toxic lake you always hear about on the TV. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you that, yeah, I'm sure it does smell pretty bad at certain times of the year, but right now, it's mid-March. It's probably about 68, 70 degrees out. Feels great. And guess what? It don't smell too bad, neither. Okay, this is a pretty friggin' epic part of the Salton Sea to camp on. I mean, we got this little private beach right here. If I wanted to, I could even take a dip. And I know you're probably going, eh, no wonder, hussy, don't take a dip in that. That's the most toxic, polluted sea in the USA. And well, unfortunately, you might actually be right about that. I mean, you can see here, there is an ungodly and disgusting amount of trash littering the beautiful shoreline here. But if you're able to look past all of that, and you're able to look past the fact that the beach is not made up of sand, but rather fish bones. Well, it's really a pretty beautiful spot. Ugh, I got fish bones in my flip flops. <laughs> Sounds like a Jimmy Buffett song. Fish bones in my flip flops. It's time for a margarita. Hey, wait a minute. That's actually not a bad idea. I'll come back down here and enjoy the sunset as soon as I fix myself an ice cold Frosty sunset cocktail. Oh, hey, Scott. <laughs> hey, man, do you have any tequila? Yes. Okay, man, I'm a little disappointed because Scott came up with a cool idea of using frozen limeade to make margaritas. Uh, and I packed this in my cooler with a bunch of ice, but Unfortunately, it's already melted. So I guess I'm just gonna have to use it as a sort of margarita mix. Far out, man. Well, it's not a frozen margarita, but it's still pretty good. It's Cheers, Scott. Awesome. <laughs> Salt and siesta. No. Boy, I can easily see wasting away the entire apocalypse right here in Margaritaville. <laughs> Man, I wish you guys were here. I know I'm at a really gross, toxic, accidental lake, and it's on a beach strewn with trash, made of dead fish. And well, to be honest, it doesn't even really smell that great. <laughs> but still, I wish you guys were here, because it feels, gosh, it feels friggin' awesome. Okay, let's go down to the shore here, now that we've got a drink. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. It's actually my second drink. Don't tell anyone. I'm not going anywhere tonight. Who cares? We're just gonna have a campfire and some burrito pie for dinner. So I might as well just go on down to the beach for a while and oh, maybe sit on a rock and reflect on all the poor choices I've made in life thus far. Just kidding. I'm gonna sit on a rock and reflect on all the awesome choices I've made in life thus far, starting with the fact that I decided to come down here and meet up with Scott. Boy, he knows all the cool places. So peaceful. It's actually, I think it's beautiful. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, it does smell a little crunchy, but I guess that's a trade-off for having a Awesome free campsite <laughs> right on the beach, such as it is. Uh, but what's interesting about this beach is there's a bunch of obsidian on it. See that? Black inside, that's obsidian. I guess the Native Americans would like uh, somehow chip little chips of it off to make arrowheads because it's super hard. And you can see there, it makes a nice sharp edge for tools. 
and it's all over this whole beach. <laughs> oh, Scott's getting some more firewood so we can have a nice campfire and fire up that Frito pie. Now Scott, I don't think has ever had Frito pie. <laughs> so he's in for a real treat. morning we spent a very pleasant evening here last night we had a little campfire had some frito pie had some drinks told some tales and it was all well and good but i'm not just here to sit around drinking and talking i'm here to do some exploring and so scott has identified a few things in the area that we need to go check out while we're camped here on this beautiful little bluff Scott's having his late breakfast, but we're gonna go right on over yonder. There's uh, some mud pots that we wanna check out. That's right, mud pots. Uh, you maybe have heard of the famous bubbling, burbling mud pots of the Salton Sea. Well, apparently there's this one thing called the Nyland Geyser, right outside the town of Nyland. It's some mud pot that I guess is, I think it's right on the San Andreas fault line and it's moving and it's such a big, impediment i guess it's actually they're actually rerouting the highway around it and it's the railroad tracks i think are in danger of being moved by it it's migrating the mud it's, the mud geyser it's my is yeah the migrating mud That's geyser of nyland yeah. so well, i definitely want to check that out uh scott eyeballed some other steam coming off over there uh earlier this morning so we're gonna go check that out and then scott also found something interesting back here in this obsidian field that i need to go check out later so it's phantasmagoric yeah fan he said it was phantasmagoric and it looks like mad max fury road over there so i figure we're gonna roll out roll out check out the geyser the mud pods and then we'll come back here and i'll i'll see what he was talking about we'll make cocktails over there yeah okay while well, scott finishes his breakfast i thought i would just kind of hike over and uh See what's over here behind these rocks. I think there's gonna be a great view of the Salton Sea, but you can see over here, look how shiny this obsidian is. I mean, it's bizarre. All these rocks are, I guess, solid obsidian. Look at that. I mean, it's just kind of covered in this, <laughs> well, Salton Sea-itis, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I get the feeling that if I stay out here too long, that crusty white stuff might start growing on me too. Okay, let's see what's up here. Oh, wow, yeah, check this out. Well, God, there's just so much to check out here. First of all, yes, an absolutely beautiful view of the Salton Sea. You can see there's all kind of birds flying around because it is a big uh, bird estuary for birds that are on their way, oh gosh, migrating north or south. So despite, you know, what you hear in the news about it being this desolate wasteland, it's nothing but dead fish, there's still plenty of life hanging on here. But then look right down here, right below us, Holy moly, look at that. You can see why the Native Americans made uh, tools and weapons out of obsidian. It's just amazing. And I'm not even really a rock hound, but I, even I find this beautiful and really fascinating. Gosh, I'm really looking forward to going to see whatever this surprise thing Scott found is. <laughs> but mud pots, gotta stay focused. Okay, yikes. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I stopped to pop a quick squat before we head out and I saw something really freaky on the ground. Okay, as previously mentioned, there is a sad amount of litter on this beach, but what on God's green earth do you suppose this was? I mean, that's an imprint of a human ear and it's a very lightweight kind of, it looks like somebody made a cast of somebody's head. Like there's the eyeball. Oh my goodness, what? Oh, there's the nose, there's the mouth, look. Oh my God, it was a face. Yikeroo. Maybe it was like a target or something. Oh, see, this piece probably went here. Like that. Oh my God, stop it. Yikes. 
Uh, I think this is one bit of litter that I won't mind packing out of here at all. <laughs> well, make something cool out of that. Okay, well, we decided to go to the established, well-known mud volcanoes first. They're right here in this field, but unfortunately, there's these friggin' signs that say it's a closed area and no trespassing. And there's a bunch of the signs, and they're all pretty new, so I guess they really don't want people walking out to the mud volcanoes anymore. But that's okay, I've got a pretty decent optical zoom on this camera. So I'm gonna walk right up as close as I can to the sign, and then I'll show you what these mud volcanoes are all about. Okay, here's the sign. You can see what I'm talking about, closed area. But just below it, that's the mud pots, okay? I'm gonna zoom in. I guess, in essence, what was happening is there was this hot, I mean, these are all um, geothermal power plants out here because there's a lot of hot spring activity in this area, geothermal activity. So I think this they were just hot, bubbling, burbling mud volcanoes that basically the mud would come blooping out of the ground and then when it hit the air, I guess it would sort of cool off and then solidify. And then these sort of mounds would build up over time. Uh, Scott actually just noted that it's probably, well, he said Instagrammers, but I think he meant any kind of social media is why they started putting up all these no trespassing signs. Cause you can see there's a very well trodden path here behind me through the mud flat out to the volcanoes. So I guess just, too many dang Instagrammers were going out taking pictures by the mud volcanoes and they shut them down. But Scott also pointed out on a more positive note that there is a there is a volcano that we can see from this angle, the fresh mud coming out of it. Check this out. Eagle Eye Scott. See, you can see right there. That's fresh, ooey gooey mud, I guess just sort of seeping out the top of that. So like, I don't know, do you ever see it like spurt up? Is there that much pressure? I was here like three years ago and I could walk out there and there weren't any signs. And yeah, you can see pots of mud inside the, the cones going bloop, 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 bloop. Oh man, I'd love to see that. Damn Instagrammers, get off my lawn! Oh man, Scott went out here years ago before it was uh, no trespassing and he has a video on his phone of it. Yeah. And these mud pots look and sound amazing. <sighs> I'm very tempted to just trespass out there because clearly people do it. In fact, there's a guy doing it right now. But then I wouldn't be able to post the video on YouTube and so I'd better not. Fortunately for me, we have that other lead. Scott saw the steam coming off those other mud pots this morning and we might be able to hike out and at least check out those. Okay, well, before we go try to investigate the secondary set of boiling mud volcanoes, Let's go see if we can check out this Nyland geyser. I mean, you said the Nyland geyser is essentially just the same thing as one of these, just bigger. I think it's more like a, a, a more of a pond of bubbly mud water. It didn't look. And it's so... a pond that's migrating. Yeah, that's moving towards. And it's the moving in such a way that they have to reroute the entire highway. Yeah, like a monster is trying to eat the railroad and the highway. Hmm. A mud monster, underground mud monster. Oh, uh, hold on. Before we get to the Nyland geyser, we pass these really interesting abandoned ruins that Scott's theory is that this, because there's so much geothermal activity in this area, this must have been some kind of old timey hot spring resort. You know what I mean? Like that looks like it was a pretty fancy building back in its day. Uh, <laughs> totally falling apart now, but wow. I'll bet you anything it was some kind of hot spring bathhouse just what a let me take a minute here what a surreal landscape i guess we're essentially sort of on the banks of the salton sea it's just sort of these big endless mud flats uh with boiling seething hot mud just below the surface and then these weird little kind of marshy estuaries where all these migrating birds hang out really a surreal part of the country and now i guess i kind of understand what scott was saying earlier about <laughs> he took a walk and he said like fury road you know mad max it's all post-apocalyptic <laughs> bombed out these gross stinking 
toxic water. Oh, wow. I just noticed from this vantage point, if you look into that hotel, look at that. There was a huge fireplace in there. It must have been the lobby of some amazing old hotel. Scott is over there making a lot of noise because I think he determined conclusively that yes, that where he is was a hot spring bathhouse. By the way, look at this friggin' ground I'm walking across. <laughs> it's so crumbly and soft. It's kind of like walking on brown sugar or like apple crumble. If you ever had apple crumble, it's like walking on top of a giant apple crumble. By the way, Scott just pointed out that what I was calling apple crumble is actually extruded alkali that becomes a toxic particulate in the air when it gets real windy out here. So that's what, part of what makes the air quality so poor down here. But hey, look, this is the friggin' old bathhouse. Look at this. These were the little stairs you would have climbed up to go for your mineral bath back in the day when they thought they were all healing. Oh, wow, yeah, look, four tubs. Yeah, and then it would have had a waterfall into each one. Yeah, and there's deposits here Wait, in the channel. Wait, I gotta walk along this ledge very carefully to get to it. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, look, mineral buildup. Check it out. Yeah, like the travertine layer where a waterfall down into the trough. And then it flowed out into the four different soaking yeah, pools. Man, that's neat. Far out, and then the, I guess guests stayed over there in the hotel, and then they just came out here to take the mineral cure. What now? And there's newer tubs over there with little oh, like, railings. Oh, look at that! Yeah, there was an. Oh wow, look, there's like a, some big open. That's the pit. hot spring. Yikes! Holy moly! Look at that! Yikeroos! I don't think I'd want to get in that hot spring. First of all, I don't know that it's hot because there's no steam coming off of it. Secondly, look at these. Uh, he was saying these are more pools over here, I guess, that people soaked in. Wow, what a trip. I can see where this was probably a really nice resort way back whenever it was open. Holy cow, look at this. <laughs> and it's just all crumbling away into the pit of despair. Oh, look at each one of these was like its own little soaking tub and now it's all dried up. <laughs> oh, but this friggin' this look first of all it kind of reminds me of Diana's punch bowl, but it's like Diana's toxic sump bowl. And it looks like it's just sort of eating away. It's like a giant sinkhole that's eating away the ruins of this old resort. Okay, well, I just Googled this place because I have signal here. And yes, come to find out, it was a mineral springs resort and a dry ice factory. How about that? Boy, no telling what you'll stumble onto here at the Salton Sea. Can't wait to see what's next. Okay, well, I was just debating to myself about if I need to end this video now because there's just more interesting stuff happening than I expected. So, uh, <laughs> this is going to be a two-parter. So, the geyser, if you want to see the geyser and those other mod pots and whatever the thing is by where we're camping, well, you'll just have to turn out, tune in to the next episode. But for now, Scott's really, really excited because he said he found something out here at this abandoned hot spring resort that I really need to see. So this is going to be the last thing I include in this segment of the video. Okay, Scott, what is it? <laughs> Ruins and wasteland this way. Okay, we're following you. Oh yeah, this looks like the the Zizek's baths, man. Yeah. Creepy. Right. Look at that. Ooh. They're like little coffin baths. Yeah, that's what it looks like in the Zizek's bathhouse, man. Needed a handle. Ah, the good life. <laughs> okay, so these creepy old baths was only come to find out part one. What's interesting about these creepy old baths though is there's like that little staircase coming down into the room with the tub. So it's almost like there was water around them as well. Like those handles, doesn't it look like it was a shallow pool with like three pools in, four pools in the middle of it? I don't know. Yeah, that's anyway, that's just part one. Apparently there's two more yeah. interesting things out here. <laughs> okay, Scott, what's number two? <laughs> what's behind door number two? <laughs> okay, so we're walking towards this low slung cinder block building and the first thing we notice, <laughs> Scott is wants me to look and notice there's water all around it. It looks like there's a big pool in front of it. Okay, the ground we're walking across is that same weird toxic dust. And then look, yikeroos. Is this like another big sinkhole like the one we saw over by the... Uh, 
bathhouse? Too, but there's a bubbly spring in the middle of oh, the fountain. Oh, you know, that reminds me of Dirty Sock Hot Spring. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that one. <laughs> it's that same green color. It's not hot. Oh, it's not hot? It's are you are you gonna grow an extra finger now? Oh, ah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, well, we might as well just go peek yeah, inside the building. The oh yeah, you can see the bubbles coming out there in the middle. Yeah, so this would the source is still good. Wow, look at the green oh, though. So yeah, I mean it's such a monochromatic landscape if you look around, and then to all of a sudden have this bright shock of green. It's pretty. Pretty bizarre. Oh man, this building is wild, man. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get footage of it, but there's a bathroom in there that's full of toxic green water and it's a pretty visually striking thing. <laughs> but I'm not sure I'll be able to walk to it. Oh, uh, holy moly, what is this? <laughs> this is better than Disneyland. Oh yeah, it's on the other side of this room. I should be able to get in here. Oh yeah, look. It's like that green pond is like eating the house. Look, <laughs> yikes, it's invading the whole thing. Yeah, yeah right on the other side of that, there's a toilet. The right you can there. see the toilet just sitting in this. Oh, you can get out <laughs> here and film over. Oh, right? yeah, go be my guest. <laughs> Yikers. Whoa, what is this? Is this like a bunch of swallow houses somebody uh, made? Number three, right there you have it, number three. Oh, this was your third surprise? Oh my god, yikes, that's just terrifying in a really weird way. So what is that, a bunch of birdhouses? I thought it was mouse houses, but I, then I think you're right. It's, it's like swallows. It's for swallows? Somebody houses. actually went through all the trouble to build this giant... I mean, for reference, it's big. Look at that. And then other reference over here to your left. Oh my god, there's even more! Yikes! <laughs> So well, it's like a horror movie. Right? It's like weird oh my god, <laughs> why did somebody make all these skyscrapers, swallow skyscrapers, high rise swallow buildings? Out of cardboard. It's all corrugated cardboard. And then in this classy French graffiti in the background, which I think means you are my inspiration. Isn't that what that means? I don't speak French. <laughs> Far friggin' out! Okay, maybe I can get a shot of that toilet through the hole in the wall here. Ugh. Oh man, not really. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. It was the creepiest toilet I've ever seen in my life, okay? Yeah, somebody's coming out here maintaining these swallow houses. Okay, stop showing me interesting stuff, Scott. This video is too long as it is. I am ending this episode now. If you want to see the rest of the weird stuff around the area that we're camping, you're going to have to tune in to the next episode. <laughs>